just got a call from our real estate agent and I know if he calls me and doesn't text me that it's good news. And it was good news, our offer got accepted on the duplex. It's funny because anytime we get an offer accepted, the instant thought is, ooh, should we have offered less? But the numbers look great, I'm so excited. Um, Kyle's on a bike ride right now. I'm tracking him on my phone, so I know he's gonna be back in a couple minutes and I'm so excited to tell him. Hi, baby. Well, hello. Oh. How'd it feel? It's windy. Yeah. My first half was like uh, 18, uh, eight and a half miles, almost nine. I was flying, I was doing like 20 miles an hour. My way back, there were stretches of mile that I was literally doing 11 miles an hour. <laughs> That's how slow I was going with the wind. But I feel good. good. And I've never like, I never cycled before until training for this triathlon. And I love it. They accepted our offer. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> Are you shitting me? No. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Dude. Is that crazy? On a freaking Sunday. Yeah. That is unbelievable. <laughs> Baby, get over here. I love you. Oh, oh my God. Now granted, we still have to do inspection. It could, uh, we could find some horrible things, but Lauren and I have gotten pretty good at spotting things and we'll be, we usually can spot things if they're gonna be some like major deal breaker. So I don't think there's gonna be any deal breakers. I'm very excited about it. What news to come back to? With our offer accepted, there are then two things that happen. The first is you sign a purchase agreement, which we did last night. And the second is get and deliver an earnest deposit check. So I have a check for $5,000. I'm gonna overnight this to our title company. And basically this will just keep us honest. So if we back out of the deal for any other reason, outside of our inspection contingency or our financing contingency, the seller gets to keep the five grand. So we did that and up next, inspection day. Yeah, so we start usually with the roof and the outside and then uh, get a good idea of what we're seeing in terms of um, defects on the outside that could lead to uh, issues inside or basement and then uh, work my way in from there. Interior, kitchens, bathrooms, usually save the basement for last because that's where we spend most of our time. So that's where all the big ticket items are. We're going to get after it and uh, figure out what's going on. Looks like you got a little bit of um, deferred maintenance here with the porch and the roof looks a little older. but. Let's see, what, let's see what we can find. But th this is what we look for when you're looking for a oil tank, utilities, these little mountains in there. You see them? So when you see those, those are targets that you want to investigate further. If it's an oil tank, you would hit it, hit it, disappear. Hit it, hit it, disappear. So walking around with the inspector, I'll show you real quick some evidence of carpenter bees. They look just like this. One there, one there, and it's basically all down this line around the front porch. It's winter time now, so they're not active, but there's larvae in there, he explained. So what he'll do is he'll come back, he'll treat all that spot, then he'll take care of them. But if you don't get them taken care of, they'll just come back and you'll have them, you'll have them act up again when it starts to warm up. So, but it's, it's a pretty inexpensive fix. So we have it all the way into the house now and I believe we're going up the stack. So I'm gonna go in with the locator and see where we are. We're gonna find out the C because this house doesn't have like any sewer pipes down below. Only the right side does. And we're gonna look on the left side and see if it goes into our right side because that's cool. what I'm thinking. We see some Y's up here. But the sewer right now, this is all terracotta, and you're able to tell it's terracotta because at every joint right there, every two feet would be another joint. So that's how you're able to tell it's terracotta piping. So you can see the water's flowing pretty good, but those are like the root things I'm talking about. It's just a little build up, nothing too serious, but a good cleaning with our sewer machine, that would clean all that stuff up. As we continue through these inspections right now, there's nothing too glaring that we kind of didn't know about. We knew that there was a lot of roof and that the roof was in rough shape. We could tell from the ground. Outside of that, 
nothing too crazy to be honest a little bit of a problem with the deck it's just old wood that needs to be replaced but the roof is definitely going to be an expensive fix so that will be a nice negotiable piece um, of the report that will come back as being an issue so Let's see what Justin thinks. Yeah, so overall it's not in bad shape. Um, I would say the biggest expense would be the roof. Um, so it has two layers of shingles on top of the cedar shake. So the newest layer is probably 20 some years old. It curled, uh, lifting up a lot of cracks. There's some shingles that blew off completely. So the roof is way overdue. Um, because of the size and the slope of the roof, it would be pretty expensive. Would you buy this house? For the right price. <laughs> <laughs> okay Woo! it is freezing so all the inspections are done so we did a normal home inspection radon termite sewer scope and oil tank sweep we normally don't do all these things but this is an older home and this is one of the most expensive properties we'll have ever bought so we really just want to make sure we have all of our bases covered and the seller didn't have a lot of information to share about the history of the home so we just felt like we needed to do our own investigation we still have to wait for the radon to come back, but we didn't have any huge surprises. Uh, we kind of already knew about the roof, that it was getting old. We knew that there was going to be some electrical issues. I think that there's a fixable problems, but gives us a nice little room for negotiation. So, and we got to learn some stuff today. I've never seen a tank sweep before. So we learned from the guy doing the tank sweep, what to look for in the basement to see if there's possibly underground oil tanks and uh, how to go about seeing if you know, there used to be an above ground tank and it's no longer there anymore. So we got some knowledge in that aspect as well. So the next step is once we get our inspection report, we'll send that out to our electrician, our roofer, and maybe a contractor so they can give us some estimates on the repairs. And then we'll take those estimates and we'll use those to either renegotiate the offer price or to see if we can get any um, more concessions at closing back from the seller. Our only concern is that the pitch of this roof is, it's big i mean it's a it's a pretty big pitch in a, in a couple spots and it's just a big roof there's a lot of roof so right right now i'm putting in that i think it's going to come back at 25k just for argument's sake you said 25k yeah i'm saying 28500 let me say come over here y'all come with me now i don't know if you can really gauge the size but we've seen the outside Throw in the comments below before we reveal what the estimates come back at. What do you think the roof estimate is gonna come back? I'm saying 25, what'd you say? I said 28,500. 28,500? Yeah. It's like the price is right. 20, I'm gonna say 25,000 and one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm starving. We'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, thank God Lauren's not home to rub salt in the wound because I just got the quote back for the roof. And fortunately or unfortunately, whether you are Team Lauren or Team Cluggy, Lauren won. It came in at $29,000. Damn. Now let's keep in mind that that also includes replacing all that cedar shake sheathing and any flashing repair and any rafter repair. I personally will blame this L on the upcharge in plywood right now. Back to the show. All right, so we got all the quotes back in between the roof and the electric and some plumbing and termite. It came out to be over $50,000. So we took all those quotes and we renegotiated with the seller and we were able to drop the sales price by $15,000. And as part of our agreement, we are responsible for the CO. So we have to take care of smoke detectors for the inspection. 
So we are heading over to Home Depot real quick to pick up those smoke detectors, <laughs> then over to the house to install them. Our favorite place. We haven't been here in so long. <laughs> $200 on smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors. Oh, we need a fire extinguisher. Oh, uh, you're right. Right? Isn't no, that? That's a twin pack. No, right there. Oh. How about the one laying on top of it? We'll get back there and get it. Oh, I can't get it. Why? Well, 210. Yeah, that's it. Oh, is that a double? I'm confused. <laughs> Please remove your card. Thank you for shopping at the Home Depot. Okay, now we have everything. That would have sucked. That would have sucked. That'd be typical though. Yeah. We did have the CO inspection and we failed for a sidewalk panel repair. But luckily in this town, they do give out temp COs, unlike another town that we invest in. Um, so we are able to move in. We just have to have it fixed within a certain period of time. So the smoke detectors and the fire extinguisher are really for the fire inspection. We'll take care of the CO items once we move in. And it's funny because we're technically spending hundreds of dollars on a house that we don't own yet. Um, so it is a little backwards. The first house we ever bought actually needed some repairs and tests done before our bank would approve the loan. So we had to spend like over a thousand dollars to do a pressure test on the um, HVAC system and a few other things and you know I guess it's just cost of doing business. All right, that is it. We're out of here for the day. The house is ready for inspection, and we need to start now getting ready to dive into renovations, which we'll be DIYing. So excited about it. So the next episode, we're going to share our renovation plan, clean up our home base, because our garage is a bit of a mess, and we'll probably share with you guys some of our favorite DIY tools. So if you learned anything from this video, if you're having fun following along with us as we got our new house app, please subscribe, like, and comment below, and let us know what you want to see moving forward. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Turn it off! <laughs>